What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys what is going to be the best deck of today's format and that is Adventure Phantom Knight. Now, okay, we could argue if it's going to be the best deck or one of the best decks, but of course it's going to be one of the top decks in today's format. The Adventure Engine is just so powerful and the PKs are just so consistent. And with all that synergy, it's definitely going to be one of the best decks in today's format. But if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. The goal for 2022 is 10,000 subscribers. I know it's a big one. I know it's hard, but I swear we can make it happen. I believe in the Spanko squad. But yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy today's video. And with that, on to the deck profile. Okay, so to get things started off with this deck profile, we're of course going to be starting off with our adventure engine over here. And that is three of the water enchantress. So for anyone that doesn't know, water enchantress from hand can banish itself to search your right of Armesia. And that's pretty much how your engine gets started. So you're playing pretty much six copies of the right, three with this and then three with the right itself. This is very important because this is how you get to your token. This is how you get all your plays started. And then of course we're playing one wandering Griffin. Now we're only playing one. You don't want to play more than one. And the reason for that is because essentially this card keeps recycling itself through the right of Armesia, through the journey of destiny and through the water enchantress. So essentially all these cards will have recycle themselves or recycle the griffin i should say that's why this card is a one-off because each time you activate its effect to negate you shuffle this card back into the deck which is eventually you're going to research it out with the journey of destiny which eventually you're going to summon it again so this is really easy to keep summoning every single turn now why this card is so good and why essentially this deck is so playable and so great now is because the wandering griffin what it lets you do is it lets you set up a negate before you go through all your combos you put up the token you put up the griffin it makes your deck nibiru proof it makes your deck hand trap proof really because any hand trap you can negate with the griffin so griffin puts up a negate before you start any of your other combos which means that if your opponent has a nibiru or has anything that would essentially break your board you have that griffin to protect it and now essentially you can do the rest of your combo without having to worry about a hand trap about a nibiru etc etc that's why this deck is so powerful and that's why it's so consistent because just this engine on its own puts up a negate before you put up your own board and then your opponent is going to have a hard time playing through it but the best part about this engine as well is that if your opponent doesn't have a hand trap then this card essentially when it goes to your opponent's turn is just effectively another negate which is why this card is so so powerful then of course for the pk engine we're playing triple torn scales triple silent boots double ancient cloak one ragged gloves as well as one stained greaves pretty much a standard pk engine i wouldn't change this at all you have to keep in mind that with the adventure engine over here you cannot activate the effects of normal summoned monsters so you might be thinking how are you going to be using the torn scales well essentially torn scales how you're going to be using this is you're going to be sending it to the graveyard summoning it from the graveyard and then using its effect so essentially that condition with the adventure engine where you can't normal summon and activate the effect of a normal summon card torn scale can get around that that's why this deck is so so synergistic really because torn scale has that effect where it's like hey i don't need to normal summon this to get the effect so that's why this this deck is just so synergistic then we're playing two ash blossom and one effect veiler you guys might be thinking what are these weird ratios like why are you playing two ash one veiler well you guys are going to see later you guys can probably see it now we are playing cross out this deck is really important where you really want to get all of your combos off and playing something like a cross out ensures that you get everything going and you don't get stopped at a random spot right so that's why we're playing these ratios mostly just for the cross out then of course we're playing one dasher and one celestial because we are playing the dpe package now you guys can see here that we're not playing the deck the package okay and we're not playing the scythe and that's because okay so i was doing some testing with this deck and i've actually talked to a couple of people who play this deck and they were saying hey the deck the package is really really powerful because once you get it off you know you can scythe lock your opponent but the thing with the scythe lock is like skill drain just came back to three right i'm gonna make a couple points here but the skill drain point for example is skill drain just came back to three so there's gonna be a lot of back row decks that are playable and that are very viable in today's format so main decking the scythe lock is kind of weird because if let's say today's format is a 50 50 combo and back row right then against 50 percent of your matchups roughly the scythe lock is dead whereas the dpe is always always going to be live on top of that playing dpe playing the adventure engine playing the dagda engine there's just too many bricks in the deck and it makes the deck very very like prone to bricking and prone to opening really awkward hands which you didn't want to do so yes i know the dagda combo is really powerful yes i know the scythe lock is really powerful but in this deck really it's not that like 
quite consistent and it makes this deck very very prone to not opening optimal hands like imagine opening like your adventure engine and then opening the scythe and then opening like you know what i mean and then opening a dasher you know it's not that great like your hands become really really awkward in that sense and you never really want that to happen so yeah we're not playing the deck the engine i just wanted to mention that but of course the dp engine is way too powerful not to play and of course we're playing double fusion destiny because fusion destiny just went to two on the most recent ban list that's perfectly fine i think this card is like obviously really good when you draw it but again you have the verte you have access to it whenever you want essentially so yeah fusion destiny to two doesn't really hurt the deck then we're playing triple right of armesia of course we're playing this card because this is essentially your brave your adventure engine so that's why we're playing this we're playing one journey of destiny as well as one of your draco back this is pretty much the standard engine that adventures play pretty much and you wouldn't really want to change this up at all your right is going to put the token on your side of the field your journey is going to get to your griffin and your draco back funny enough is really good especially going second because going second while it's equipped to a non-effect monster aka your token you can target one card your opponent controls and just return it to the hand right so that's really really good and the nice thing about this card as well is if this card is sent to the graveyard you can target an adventure token you control and then equip it from the graveyard why that's really good is because your journey when you add the griffin to your hand you have to discard a card so a lot of the times you can discard the draco back and that's not really bad because it'll come back in the form of equipping to your token essentially so you're not losing the card which is really really good and you could also technically pitch it with the torn scales as well so regardless getting this to the graveyard is not that bad and it's not like losing a card because you're going to be getting it back so that's why the draco back is really good then of course we're playing one called by the grave as well as two cross out designator you really don't want to lose the hand traps i know i said earlier that the griffin kind of it makes it so that you don't lose the hand traps with this card which is true don't get me wrong but there's chances especially in today's format your opponent is going to be playing multiple hand traps they could open like an ash plus a nibiru or or you know a nibiru plus a plus a nivaler or something like that right especially a deck like this where if they just veil your torn scales you a lot of the time it becomes really hard to play or if they veil your cherubini or anything like that it makes it really difficult to play even with the griffin because okay you, let's say you use your griffin on the first hand trap but you're not protected from any other hand shot from there on out right so that's why i do like to play this it's a very defensive minded strategy but it's very important because once you get your combo off it guarantees you get your combo off but once you get that combo off you're winning the game it's going to be very very difficult for your opponent to play through it that's why it's very important to be playing the two cross out as well as the call by the grave then of course we're playing one rota all your pks are warriors you want to search them all you're playing one foolish burial foolish burial essentially is an extender for you if you can't get to one of your names if you can't get to like a cloak or something like that or you can't get to a boots you just send it out to the graveyard and then you go from there so it's kind of like an extender then we're playing double cosmic cyclone in the main deck yes we're playing cosmic cyclone in the main deck now the reason for that is because again like i said skill drain is back at three there's going to be a lot of back row decks roaming around and you need to be prepared for it you really don't want to lose random game ones because you don't have a cosmic cyclone to out one skill drain you know what i mean like if your opponent just flips a skill drain on you you kind of in a really bad spot and if you just have that one cosmic cyclone you can just win the game from there so that's why cosmic cyclone i think in the main deck is very important then we're playing double imperm again the double imperm is mostly for just for the cross out designator but again you it's also a hand trap like you guys have to keep in mind that with the cross out you're still playing hand traps it's not bad it's not bad for you to have ash in your hand it's not bad for you to have Veiler in your hand so even if you open these cards even though they're meant for cross out it's not a bad thing, right? So that's why you have these cards. You have Imperm at two here as well. Then we're playing one Phantom Knight Wings, one Shade Brigadine, as well as Triple Fog Blade. Again, just the PK engine. This keeps your PK engine going. You keep summoning your PKs back from the graveyard. You keep comboing off. And then the Brigadine is also really important because this is also an extender when you don't have an extra card to summon. This card is obviously just another monster for you so that you can keep going with your play. So that's it for the main deck. It's a 40 card main deck. I don't think I'd switch this up at all. I really like how this deck has been playing out for me, especially in my testing. And again, I know a lot of people like to play the deck, the package, but I don't think the deck, the package is very important. Now, I have seen people say that you can side in the deck, the package, which is very good as well if you think about it because going into games two games three let's say you lose your game one but you're playing against another combo deck or you're playing against another pk like adventure deck etc etc whatever combo deck right you can side in the scythe package going first which is not that hard it's just a scythe and a dagda so you guys can do that as well if you wanted to just wanted to mention that but yeah i don't think in the main deck it should be played because there just becomes too many engines that can brick with each other right so yeah so that's it for the main deck i really like this main deck off to the extra deck here we are playing of course one dpe we're playing one predator plant verte anaconda of course we're playing one one Rusty Bardiche, one Cherubini. Again, all of these you guys can see are just combo pieces. You know, you make Cherubini, you send a card. You make Bardiche, you send another card. You you eventually make Verte, you make the DPE. This whole extra deck is really just combo pieces, right? So yeah, you're playing these two. You're playing IP for those situations where IP can be really, really valuable. You're playing Apollo, of course. Access Code Talker helps you OTK on your turns two, turns three. You have your Almirage here as well. The reason you play Almirage is because all your PK monsters, like if you think about your Torn Scales is less than a thousand, your Phantom Knight Silent Boots 
boots is less than a thousand, your cloak is less than a thousand, gets them in the graveyard for you. So Amaraj is really important. Then we're playing double break sword, double levy, one Zeus, one F0, and one Utopic Draco Future, another F0 essentially. And the reason you're playing these ratios, okay, so I wanted to play one at any point, and you could play here that you guys can see I have a downard magician. You could cut one of these, like one break sword or one levy for the downard just for your Zeus. But I do like these ratios because a lot of the time I found that instead of the Dagda package, right, instead of using your resources to go into Dagda and Scythe, whatever, what you can do is you can make a break sword, make your levy, and then you can use the levy effect, use whatever effects you need to use. But then from there, make an F0 because F0 just needs two Xyz monsters with the same rank, but not number monsters, which your levy is not a number monster your break sword is not a number monster so a lot of the time you can end on boards with like an adventure token well, of course with your griffin dpe plus an f0 which is very very powerful because you're putting up multiple negates there you of course have the dpe pop which is very powerful so that becomes really really good and levy of course is really important because it helps you extend so that's why this card is of course is just really really insanely powerful but i just wanted to show you guys that th this deck is very very powerful and even without the dagda package that a lot of people seem to be like levitating towards to or moving towards to i don't think you should be playing that and again through testing it's whatever you guys like i don't like this personally but i've also seen people cut the dpe package to play the deck the package i wouldn't recommend that but i'm just saying like i think this deck has been working out super super well for me this might be and probably will be the best deck of the format and i think this deck is just super super consistent plays through a lot of things and again when you're playing a very defensive minded version like i am you can pretty much play through anything and keep in mind that if this deck is going to be one of the best decks if this deck is going to be very represented then the cross out also makes it really good because you can hit any of the other PK cards in the mirror match. Imagine your opponent trying to combo and you cross out their torn scales. What are they going to do? So that, that's why this card is really, really powerful because it's kind of like, hey, I can use it defensively where I'm never going to lose to any one of your hand traps. I'm, my combo is going to go off every single time. But you can also use it offensively where it's kind of like, oh, wait a second. You're not, I'm, I'm going to make my full board, but you're not going to play. Like that's why this card is really, really good. And that's again, that's why I'm playing the build that I'm playing. That's why I like these ratios. I really like how this deck is playing out for me. I really, really like the fact that this deck can actually make F0 pretty easily, to be honest with you. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the deck and I hope you guys can try this out yourselves. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. The thing is, like I said earlier, this deck is going to be one of the best decks of today's format. This deck is just really, really consistent. It synergizes super, super well. And the fact that you have access to a negate before your opponent has a chance to activate something like Nibiru, or to be honest, any hand trap really, you're pretty much free to go with all your combos with this deck. That's why I think this engine, the adventure engine, synergizes super, super well with the PKs and the PKs themselves just combo super, super well. So putting up two to three negates, putting up a DP, and f0 all that stuff very very powerful deck i think you guys should try it out yourselves if you haven't already let me know also in the comment section down below if you guys have any suggestions any changes let me know what you guys think about the dagda thing again i don't like the dagda but let me know what you guys think thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that sign it out peace